Hey, imagine selling a product that half the world needs. Once they start buying it, they can't stop, but have to keep on buying it for decades. It's taxed unnecessarily, you can't outright advertise it, and the market is dominated by global brands. How's that for a business and marketing challenge? Oh, big challenge indeed. Before we get stuck into episode 413 of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, the marketing gold is made exclusively possible thanks to American Express. Yes, Amex. I say exclusively because for this episode, the last couple of episodes, and a couple of future episodes, Amex have kindly taken all available advertising spots. So do yourself and me a favour and check out their suite of business cards. They're brilliant. They're designed to meet the financial needs of small business owners just like you and they will reward you more than you may give them credit for. Simply Google Amex Business to find out more. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show A successful small business owners share their souls To take your marketing straight to the lead Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie And welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Show I am your host, Timbo Reed, you, infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner and you are ready, I hope you're ready, that's why you're here, to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Big show today. Mia Klitsis joins us. She's the founder of female hygiene brand Moxie and she shares her inspiring business and marketing journey. It's a ripper. How's this for a stat? She sells a box of tampons every 30 seconds and you're about to find out how she does it. Plus, two more lucky listeners share what marketing is working for them so we can all benefit and in return, I give them a couple of prizes. As per usual, team, there is marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Hey, I'm proud to announce that you and I will be catching up with my beautiful daughter, Stephanie, next week. She joins us on an interview with two 24-year-old Instagrammers who have created a number of fairly significant businesses from their combined 1.6 million following. But right now, let's meet today's guest, Moxie founder, Mia Klitsis. By the way, you can watch this interview over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 413 as I Facebook lived it, which I'm doing more and more of and getting some great engagement from you guys. So thank you. That video has already had a few hundred views. Now, Mia is a Melbourne-based entrepreneur with a passion for social entrepreneurship and women's rights. Her Moxie brand of women's personal care products can be found, how's this, at Woolworths, Coles, Priceline, Chemist Warehouse. Wow. Wow. They are seriously big distribution contracts. And in an Australian first, Mia recently launched the the very cheekily named Moxie Box Club. (laughs) That will all become clear later. A fully customisable online subscription service for women's personal care products. It's brilliant. She gave a box to my daughter, Steph. And um, boy, oh boy, it is an impressive customer experience, I must say. Now, what Mia has achieved is no mean feat, given just how dominated the women's personal care category is by huge global brands with extremely deep marketing pockets. You're going to love this chat. We cover everything from how Mia got the idea to market to how she secured deals with Australia's biggest supermarket chains. Plus, Mia shares some of the highs and lows of growing a business like Moxie. One of the low points involves losing $500,000 worth of stock in the very early days. She's here to tell the story. I started off by asking Mia where the idea for Moxie came from. What started as a bit of a running joke between two friends uh, 13 and a half odd years ago eventually became my career to date. What was the running joke? uh, 
putting tampons in tins so they would stop rolling around in my handbag. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Love it. Yeah, it was a personal pain point of mine and yeah. something that I had kind of struggled with as a young woman and something that I know my friends had struggled with. And, um, yeah, the more that we talked about it, the more we realised, gee, there's potentially some opportunity here. There's No one's really doing anything in this space. Um, they so, were mostly boxed. Yeah, they mostly boxed. Box, right? Yeah, so they, they traditionally they come in flip-top boxes, basically, cardboard yes. boxes that... Cigarette packs. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Well, yeah, pretty much, yes. like mini cigarette packs. And they always break open in your bag, the tampons fall out, they get damaged or they get grubby, and you don't want to use them after mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, I just really thought that they... It, it was the most feminine product. It's the ultimate feminine product. Like, it's something that women have to carry all the time. Mm. Yet I felt that the offerings on the market were kind of anything but feminine, mm-hmm. not functional, um, were not you looking particularly for an idea? pretty. Were you looking for a business idea? No, not at all. No, I was a marketing student. Um, I was about to graduate. I was doing an internship um, at a multinational in uh, product development. I actually didn't really know where I wanted to go. I didn't quite know. I think I always had a sense that I would do my own thing. I'd come from a background of family business. My my father uh-huh. had his own business. My partner at the time, who's now my husband, was in family business. Uh-huh. So I think I kind of always had a bit of a spark to, to do something, but I certainly was not looking on the hunt, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. yeah it, so so it, what did you go, okay, because many, I hear this a lot, where, yeah. you know, someone has an idea, they've experienced a problem and they've mm. gone, gee, I wish someone would do something about right. that. And oh, they go, well, no one does anything about it and yeah. things remain the same. Yeah. What did you do in order to start the Moxie business? I think, I think just on that point, I think it was good that I was young and quite naive. You know, I was 22 and had very little responsibility. And so there wasn't a lot holding me back from that perspective. I think perhaps had I known now what I, sorry, had I knew, had I known then, had I known then what I know now and what I've learned. Yeah. (laughs) Gosh. Um, Perhaps I wouldn't have done it. Okay. It might have scared me off. So I think, um, you know, a bit of guts, some determination, some, some bit of your stubbornness, naivety, yes. all rolled into Nothing one. Wrong with any of that. Yeah, and no, in hindsight, I think that's actually what made it work. Have you to kind of hold a bit of that? Now, what are we talking, <laughs> 10 years on? Oh, gosh, th- 13 years on. 13 years yeah. on. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been corporatised or have you managed to maintain that entrepreneurial, small business kind of uh, gut instinct? Yeah, I think I have. I think I have. It'd be interesting to ask my colleagues what they think about What's that. What's it but feel like? Can you describe that feeling? Yeah, it's entrepreneur, it's so thing. interesting. I th- it's it's really um, it's quite empowering mm-hmm. to be able to develop your own ideas and then see them come to fruition. Which you know, unfortunately, in marketing, I mean, I, I have a marketing background. Sometimes in marketing roles, you may not necessarily get to experience that. You might just be one small silo so in true. a much bigger business, and you don't necessarily get to see those those ideas come to fruition. So mm-hmm. for me to be able to take something from concept to, you know, conceptualisation to commercialisation is, um, yeah, it's Empowered pretty awesome. Word. It's pretty Some awesome. Some would say it's an overused word, but I completely get what you mm. mean when that feeling of being a small business owner versus yeah. a cog in the wheel. Yeah. We talk a lot about the cubicle es- escape in right. this, uh, on this show, <laughs> and I know they're listening. You know, all got an idea, just desperate Bless trying to... Bless them. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, so you have this idea, tampons in a tin. Mm. You take it to market. Yeah, so we pretty much developed it within six months, which in hindsight is mad. I'm not sure I'd recommend it. Yeah, well, I think, you know, now knowing what I know about about launching products and even having launched some more of my own over the years, line extensions and what have you, yeah, six months is really quick to get a completely new brand off the ground, particularly in a mature category. Feminine hygiene is, you know, dominated by massive multinationals, Mm. very few players in the market, I would say, as opposed to a lot of other FMCG categories. So, yeah, in hindsight, I think it's good that I was gutsy because I, I, I bit off a lot. <laughs> because it would be very easy. I mean, you're right. I mean, that is a category dominated by the by big, big, big boys. brands. Yeah, yeah. Big budgets. You could so easily have gone... No yeah. way. But naivety made you go, no way. It did. Absolute it way. It did. Yeah, absolute way, all the way. <laughs> and... Yeah, I think I, I think I really believed in it. Yeah. You know, I really backed it and I really believed in it. And I honestly don't think for one second I had that thought process of, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? This isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. I was just so, you know, hell-bent on, 
on delivering mm-hmm. and more from a personal perspective, just, you know, really wanting to see it come to life and knowing that it was something truly unique that no one had done, I just wanted to make it happen. Did you have to borrow money or how did you – what did you do? Yeah, look, those were the days oh, – those are the days where you Daddy. could, yeah, no, 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 none of that. None of that. No, those are the days where you could go to the bank basically with a with an order from Woolworths and get a loan, which I think times have changed quite significantly. Yes. But our first retailer was Woolworths. We got ranged nationally in all stores. Yeah, it's actually it's crazy <laughs> to think about it now. Um, I just marched into Woolworths as a twenty two year old and thought, oh, yes, well, you this, didn't this just is a great idea in because getting a meeting with a buyer at Woolworths would not be easy. So how did that yeah, happen? Yeah, it's well, actually, we had. Um, from memory, we'd actually contacted Coles first because they're Melbourne-based. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, we were an unknown business, an unknown brand. They didn't want to know us, so um, hung up the phone pretty promptly. And so we thought, OK, well, let's try Woolies then. And uh, I think we had just sort of happened to call coincidentally around the time of their review schedule, oh, review period. Timing's everything. Yeah, which great timing. And yeah. so they said, oh, fantastic, you can make a meeting and come up and see us. And so um, it, wasn't, it wasn't too difficult, but again, I think it was because we, we, we called at the right time. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we just, we went prepped. We made sure that we had all of our ducks in a row. I'd actually ordered a container worth of stock in preparation. So talk about, gosh, talk about being confident. How many tampons is in a container? That's a hell of a lot. A lot. It's a lot. Tens 40, of thousands? Oh, it was a 20-foot container. Oh, gosh, yeah. Mia. Yeah, yeah. I would have had probably a lifetime supply of hang tampons on, let's just, had I not sold <laughs> I need to understand that. So you have gone tampons in a tin, yeah. no brainer, I'm going to do that. Uh, it would be great if we get a big distributor like Woolies, mm. tick, but before <laughs> Woolies come on board, yeah. you've actually gone and ordered. Yeah. And in, so that mm. means you have designed the tin, you've yep. sourced the tin, you've sourced the... You're, yep. not, you're not manufacturing tampons. I'm assuming you're buying them right. at yep. this point from elsewhere. Yeah. And yeah, huge gamble. Huge. Well, great in retrospect. Yes, but could have gone south. It could have gone the other way. So Very south. dangerous, incredibly risky. Yeah. But I... I Did you tell Woolworths you've got... <laughs> yeah, and I wonder if that's what got us ranged. You know, in all honesty, I, I think being that prepared... And being that confident in the product, I wonder if, you know, often people go to go to buyers or, you know, go to big retailers and say, I've got this seed of an idea and I'm thinking it's this and that. And, you know, I appreciate that sometimes collaboration is important mm-hmm. between the two, but, you know, they're incredibly busy. They've got so many products yes. to look after and new products to look at that I imagine, you know, someone that goes there quite well prepped mm-hmm. Would have a would yeah. Have it shows the, you've got you, you're committed. You've got skin in the game. You're not mucking around. You're I not think testing so. the market. You I are think there. so. You yeah. are part of the market. And and I think also you know we did have something truly unique. There was mm-hmm. nothing else in the world like Moxie. There was no tampon brand or feminine hygiene brand at the time that kind of took a different approach. Took a bit more of a beauty slash fashion approach to feminine hygiene rather than something that was you know kind of clinical. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make it. Something that women purchased because they wanted to and not just because they had to. Yep, okay. It was very much this kind of grudge purchase, you know. I want to talk about brand. You're big on mm, brand and I feel I love like brand, looking, yeah. at, looking at your visual brand, looking at your packaging, you've brought in some product. It looks, it, it looks amazing. Thank you. And I want to talk about your marketing later on. But in terms of brand, two questions. First of all, where the name Moxie come from? Mm. So Moxie is actually a retro word. It's an American word from uh, from like the 30s and 40s and it actually means to have guts, determination and courage. Does it? Yeah, in the face of adversity. And it was often a word that was used to describe women. Right. So you'd hear it in a lot of old movies. She's and, got a bit of Moxie yeah, about her. Yeah, so it'd be Humphrey Bogart saying, you know, she had big brown eyes with a lot of Moxie. Or, really? Yeah, you got a lot of Moxie, kid, and it means you got a lot of guts. And... Having designed the tin, you know, I thought tin itself is quite retro. It is, yes. it, it is, you know, a packaging material that was quite commonly used for all kinds of things, yeah. um, you know, back in the 30s and 40s. And I thought, oh, it's looking, starting to look quite retro. Perhaps it needs a bit of a retro nod. It needs a retro name. Mm-hmm. And yeah, after a bit of research, found Moxie and rolled off the tongue and it yeah. was available. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It a and it told and a, a story. Yeah, and... yeah, all of that. And it told a story. And it was actually very much how I felt as a young woman at the time. I very much felt like it was going to take a lot of Moxie. 
Moxie. And, and, I, and part of branding and marketing is being able to tell stories mm. around things. So Moxie obviously plays into that. You yeah. have a wonderful quote around branding. We've learned how to compete on brand. It's the one thing, if done right, can't easily be replicated or taken away from you. And, you know, in mm. a world of sameness, there's no shortage of tampon brands, there's no shortage of vets, of plumbers, of everything. So yeah. brand is one of those things that can set us apart. Can you define brand in your terms mm. and tell us about how important, how you've gone about branding Moxie? Yeah, I think, as I said, I think brand is really your your true USP. I think it's your truly unique you know, thing that you can hang your hat on beyond a product innovation, which I think, unfortunately, you know, these days even product innovations can be copied. Yes. So to me, brand is really your identity. And much like people, personalities can't be replicated. Mm-hmm. I have really feel the same about brands. I think a brand is a personality. It's truly unique and it's not something that can be easily replicated. And I think if you're true to your brand um, over the course of its, you know, of its lifetime... I think that is that's something that you can really really hang your hat on. Um, so for us, entering such a mature category dominated by such big players, we were never going to be able to compete on ad spend, for example. Never. We could never, you know. I, just, <laughs> like, I wish I had those budgets, but you know, well, I just ten percent of those budgets. Oh, maybe. even five. Let's be honest. Yes. I mean, I wish I had those kind of budgets, but I just, but we didn't, and we knew that, and so we thought, how we have to compete on brand first and foremost. The brand has to stand for itself. So even initially, we didn't even heavily promote the tins. We promoted the brand, and it was more about you know what what it how? meant to have Moxie. Well, you, went, well, what, you weren't running TV ads. What, no, we weren't we running TV ads. We weren't running TV ads. Um, we actually, we, we did some sponsorships. So we did a lot of more kind of brand experiential stuff. So we went to Moonlight Cinema and we did some sampling and we had, you know, Moxie Girls and we actually actually got the uh, Three Minute Angels who were a little, a massage crew oh, yeah. going around to all the women in the audience, yeah, giving yeah. them three minute massages right. and telling them about the brand and yeah. things like that. Um, other brand collabs, alignments. So aligning ourselves with other brands or other initiatives that really displayed that that meaning of moxie. Yeah, okay. And, and you know, really just educating. So I do a lot of talks in schools, speaking to young girls about the importance of yeah, of moxie, you know, oh, wi- women's rights, um, you know, making good consumer choices and, you know, all kinds of things. How do you get those? Schools are, uh, I've had a number schools of are guests great, come through. Yeah. Schools are great. They're not easy to get into. What's your little secret source of... I'm, look, I'm, I'm really fortunate. I, I actually can't even remember really how it how it started. Um, but it's something I've been doing over, over quite a few years now and bless them, they call me back every year, which is fantastic. So, yeah, yeah, I've kind of got my little set of schools that I go back and visit. Great marketing. Yeah, yeah, I see the year nines and year tens and talk to them a lot about, um, obviously about starting a business as a young woman and and what that meant and what my journey was like and how I sort of, you know, got to got to you know this this point um but also talk to them a lot about social responsibility and things like that we Mm -hmm. started an initiative a few years back so i talked to them about you know the the power of um their choices and how you can use your business as a platform to basically drive awareness of the things that you believe in so So. moxie's going along tampon Mm. in a tin Mm -hmm. tick we all wanted that well, I didn't, but, you know, 50% of the population <laughs> did. And that's going along swimmingly. At what point did you then make it a subscription service? So we still sell in major retail. Yes. So throughout Australia we export quite a bit too. Uh, probably in the last year or so we've gone online with the subscription model. This is the one product, like personal care products, feminine hygiene, is the one product that women unfortunately have to buy monthly. So it is something we need constantly. And it's kind of also the one thing we often forget to buy. Forget to buy. Because <laughs> it is that grudge purchase. It's not like, oh, it's a lippy or it's chocolate or it's bread or milk, um, even though it is it is a necessity because it, it really only is needed or used kind of that one week of the month. Mm-hmm. We often forget. We're often caught out. We run out in the most awkward of situations. And um, so I thought, you know, Moxie, Moxie really, again, it was all about solving pain points for women. This was another one. Stop stop that fear of running out mm-hmm. and um, have it at the ready and available no, for when no you need it. No one offering a monthly subscription? No, there's a couple of smaller players around. So, so I get my blades on a monthly subscription. Yeah, brilliant. Like, mm. it makes so much sense. Mm. And I think now, you know, we're, A, we're so time poor. We're buying so much online. We're on our phones all the time. It just makes sense to, yep. you know, at the press of a button, 
be able to have that convenience. And I thought it was just, it was a perfect fit, perfect fit for Moxie, perfect for our customer, something that they were asking for. Have you for. been overwhelmed or underwhelmed by the take off, take up of the subscription service? Mm, that's, yeah, fair question. Um, and while you're thinking about that, mm, I'll give you some thinking time. Oh, great. Because, because um, part of that is you are, you continue to compete in a very busy category. I worked at an advertising agency mm. when I first came out of uni who had the Stay Free Libra yeah. uh, account and I saw the budgets and yeah. I saw the work gone into it. So you were competing in a very... And yet Moxie for me, and I'm not part of your target audience, I hadn't heard of Moxie. Mm. Uh, until I came into contact with you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the underwhelm question is both about the subscription service mm. take-up and the brand take-up. Yeah, it's been it's quite interesting. I feel like people will definitely resonate with the tins. So as soon as I say, oh, often I find myself saying, oh, you know, Moxie, and they, say, oh, they look like they're ticking in their, their minds. And then I say, oh, you know, the tampons in the little tins. And they say, oh, yes. So... We've kind of been careful not to just be known about the tampon, not not to be known or defined by the tampons in the tins, but it is such a core, yes. unique, um, you know, offer. So it's a bit difficult not to be. Um, so I think we've definitely got some work to do mm-hmm. still in terms of awareness. I think even 13 years later, we still definitely have work to do. Um, the subscription has really kind of floored me, particularly in the last couple of weeks. Last couple of weeks? Just how, the last couple of weeks. Uh, so... Box Club as you see it now, Moxie Box Club is in its third iteration. Can I just say, <laughs> a few your websites use of the later, word box and we're going to talk brand and copy <laughs> later. And I'm glad you've Excellent. raised it because I can now raise I'm, it. Oh, I'm, no, yeah, I'm glad you've picked it up. Fantastic. Yeah, Excellent. We'll come back to that. Great. A little, 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 uh, yeah, little teaser. subtle. Yeah, yeah. Just some little subtle cheekiness, which well, is very moxie. What's happened um, in the last. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah part of, well, being clear on your brand and yeah. part of your personality. And being is true to subtle, that. Yes. It is. It is. It's being a little cheeky. It's pushing the envelope just, just a little bit. It's not being crass. Um, oh, but it is what I, makes I, us you, unique. You walk the line of crassness, but I think it's hilarious. Well, I think polarizing is good. Yes. You know, I think that's worked for us in the past. Um, I'm digressing. but our, our Well, I think we're going there. So let's just, I, I will read that line, which was uh, at the, oh end gosh, of your, which one? <laughs> the end of your video, your box may be unpredictable, but ours isn't. I mean, I, I, I think that's genius. You know, it's a bit naughty and a bit cheeky. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it's about owning that. And if it polarises, then... Yeah. You can't be everything to everyone. It be the black the words, and gold tampon if you oh, want to be everything, everything took to everyone. Took the words out of my mouth. And I knew that from very early on and I don't think we've ever tried to be everything to, to anyone. As long as we're something to a to a decent number of women, yes. then, you know, that's that's good for me. It's not going to be for everyone. I think if it were, then it would be quite generic. As you said, it would be, you know, a, a private label or a black and gold or something. And it's not, you know, I, I want the Moxie black user and gold to... make tampons? Yeah, there yeah, there are certainly it. are home brands. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. Hello yeah. to the black and gold people listening to Hello. the uh, <laughs> So going back, you said the last two weeks you've yeah, been Yeah, last two weeks it's just really kind of taken off. And I wonder if it's just, you know, being online kind of has this there's this, you know, a viral nature to it. You know, it's But what did you do in the last two what have you done? Can you can you trace it back to... We're, we're, well, we're looking at it at the moment. That's that's the thing. I, I just think any marketing or any advertising, 50% of it works. You just don't know yes. which 50%. Uh, beauty about online is that it's more... It's, it is traceable. It is trackable. It's a lot more measurable. And so we're really sort of trying to get our ducks in a row and trying to figure out exactly what it was. But I think, again, it's this shareability. It's girls telling their friends. I mean, I'm noticing it on our Facebook page, um, which gets a heap of interaction. Like, the engagement's kind of crazy. You know, women tag friends or tagging their daughters and so I think it really is about word of mouth but online is just so rapid Mm -hmm. it's so quick whereas I I remember back in the day we'd put an ad in Cosmo or Dolly or something and it could take months to see any kind of result if at all Mm. because again we may see a spike in in retail sales but could we attribute that to the ad you know Mm. in Cosmo who knows really whereas there's a direct correlation between what you do for example on Facebook and the results through your sales funnel Mm. which is really exciting to me (laughs) really really excites me (laughs) well it's trackable and (laughs) you know it's proof of you're either doing something right or you're doing something wrong Um, a slight digression to the tins Mm. ad much to the price oh yeah they do yeah it's not a cheap product to make. Yeah, I imagine. Wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, it's not. But again, it sets us apart and it's just something that we're prepared to take a hit on because it is it is part of what makes our brand unique. Yes. So along with the personality, there's, there's it's I think with with any brand 
you can have a great brand, but the product has to deliver as well. Mm-hmm. It still has to be functional. It has to be at least as good as the competition. Yep. Um, for it, I think, for it to be successful. Um, so, yeah, we, we take a hit, but, um, but yeah, it's important. We are having a chat to Mia Klitsis, who is the founder of Moxie, a, well, it is a tampon subscription service, but it's also available through chemists mm. and supermarkets and just having to get the Woolworths account uh, for, <laughs> as soon as we started business. I love that. But, um, I want to talk marketing, but before we get into the, that, I want to talk politics, which I never do on oh. this show. It bores the pants off me, and I'm not very good at it, right? However... Do you lobby government because of this? Uh, the, our government in Australia applies GST, 10% tax, mm. to tampons, which is a necessity. Yeah. So does that get your back up? Does that, do you lobby government or do you just leave it alone? Ooh, politics, my least favourite topic. But it does seem unnecessary to tax necessity. So before we get Mia's take on this, Here's a business tip thanks to our exclusive partner, American Express. Here's a money-making tip from American Express member and Four Pillars Gin founder, Stu Greger. I, for the life of me, don't understand why a business won't accept Amex because what you're potentially doing is knocking back customers who want to spend money on your product or your brand or your service or whatever it is. And I frankly don't understand it. If someone wants to give me their Amex and buy 10 bottles of gin, I'll tell you what, I'll take their Amex, thanks very much. You're potentially also denying yourself a big chunk of corporate business as well. You know, because a lot of sales guys, a lot of guys, I know me in my own business, I use Amex. And if I go to, a, if I ring to make a booking at a restaurant or a bar or something, I say, do you accept Amex? and they say no, I go somewhere else. So they don't even know the business they're, they're missing out on. It beggars belief. And I often find myself having these com- rather awkward conversations at the <laughs> with with a shopkeeper or a, or a bar owner or a restaurateur saying, why wouldn't you take it? I'll pay you the extra. I'll pay one and a half. Oh, the credit card service fee or whatever you want. Take my money. It's business 101, really. Make it easy for people to give you money. Speaking of money, the American Express Business Explorer credit card comes with 50,000 bonus points every year, a low interest rate, and two points on every dollar you spend. Not to mention a couple of tickets to the very swish Amex Lounge at Sydney International Airport. Search Amex Business to find out more. New American Express card members only. Terms and conditions apply. And now back to Moxie founder Mia Klitsis, who was about to share her view on the federal government's tampon tax. It does get my back up and I think about this a lot and I feel like my view has changed slightly on it. Your facial expressions also just changed. Yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting question. I do... There is no doubt in my mind that feminine hygiene is a necessity. I think, you know, we... You know, being in a developed country, we are very fortunate that we have access to these products, Mm -hmm. but they are a necessity unless the rest of the population would be happy for us to just, dare I say, bleed freely, which is not really good for anybody. I mean, each to their own, but (laughs) really, it's not not ideal. It's not ideal. They are a necessity. We really can't do without them. Um, And so, get you back up, but you've chosen. So we have. Well, we have lobbied at times. We certainly have, and we and we certainly have. either, you know, jumped on existing campaigns or started our own campaigns to try and encourage the government, particularly when Julia Gillard was mm-hmm. was Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Um, okay. But unfortunately, I feel, like, I feel like that fell on deaf ears. I think my, my experience in Uganda, um, so I went to Uganda in 2013, and long story short, we started an initiative called Pads for Pads, whereby we use the profits we make from Moxie in Australia to fund the production of reusable sanitary items for girls in developing countries. Wow. So we started in Uganda. And when I went to Uganda, I kind of changed my tune a little bit. I thought I still do believe that, well, I feel like if tampons or feminine hygiene is going to be taxed, I feel like we should use that money for good. So we should use that either for something like, you know, supporting at-risk women or women in need who don't have access to products or providing products for free for young schoolgirls or something. So I'm sure the government would love that. But Mm -hmm. I feel like that money could be redistributed. I feel like, you know, as I said, we're very fortunate that we can afford them. You're okay with the tax. You'd like to see it distributed. I would just like to see it. it, if it, If it is something that is going to be taxed, then I would love to see that money actually go to good use and 
and be put towards something that would actually benefit women, Australian women. If GST was removed mm. from feminine hygiene products, how would it impact your business? I don't think it would, to be honest. I don't honest. think it would either. Not at all. It's more Not a at moral all. kind of thing. It is, it is absolutely. Commercial... Absolutely. So, mm. um, you know, I think if, uh, you know... As I said, I'm sort of in two minds okay. about it. It should I, it should either be not Enough taxed, politics. yeah, this don't is not a don't tax show. it, or you know, let us do something. We cool don't do with opinions it. around here. We do marketing. <laughs> Let's talk about growth because you've had some fantastic growth. Um, can you wrap some numbers around, like just scope, Moxie? Give us a sense mm. of where Moxie's at now. You know, I everything please me. I want a complete balance sheet. Uh, exp- <laughs> no, no, whatever you're willing to, but just to give us a sense of where you're at. Uh, so. At the moment, we're selling a pack of Moxie somewhere in the world about every 30 seconds. It's a lot of tampons. It's strange. It's a really odd feeling. I think it doesn't become reality, excuse me, unless I often when I see it on the shelf at a retailer, I'm like, oh gosh, oh no, oh that's mine. Oh wow, it becomes quite real. Yes. But yeah, I think rolling numbers like that off the tongue is. um, I I, I think 13 years ago, I never would have thought that we. Every 30 seconds, a pack of Moxie. Every 30 seconds. Oh, we're a tight team. There's about eight of us at the moment. Love that. Yeah, we're a really nice tight team. Great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, all locally based? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tampons are made where? Tampons are made in Europe. Europe? Yeah. Okay. Wouldn't have picked that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you talk turnover? Can't really. I can't yeah, give away my trade yeah. secrets. No I one's can't. Listening. Just got a no one's Facebook listening, just a few people. <laughs> um, no, I can't talk turnover. Okay. But look, it's not. It Look, it's, it's certainly not sending me on... Um, Yachts, not yet. You know, yet, but um, it does okay. Good, it does okay. Uh, look, I think the motivation for me was never, it was never for it to be an enormous money spinner. For me, it was about doing Come something I loved. Come no, on, I really, you know, as, as long as it, look as long as it pays eye. the bills. Have you had anyone knock on the door saying, "I'd like to buy Moxie"? No, not yet. Not yet. They will. No. They will. Do you they think? Have, yes. Do you no, think? No, no doubt. Don't know. Is it for sale. Everything's for sale. You for know what? Price. I would. I think I'm at the point now where I'm. I'm a lot less emotional about the business. As I was perhaps what even happened? five years ago. What happened? Um, I don't know. I, think I still, I still certainly feel challenged by it, and I still love it. Um, but I'm just a bit less precious about it. Okay. Yeah, and I, I've, there's a lot more ideas up here that that want to come to fruition. Is, is so, that good, is that a good thing? Do you think to lose the emotion around something that you have um, given birth to? Mm, I certainly don't think it's a bad thing. I think probably think clearer. I do. I do. I still. Th- I, I certainly think I'm still a risk taker. I'm still as much of a risk taker as I was then. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit older now, which arguably perhaps it's just more stupid to be that risky when you're a bit, when you're older. But um, yeah, I think I don't think it's bad to to lose a bit of that emotion. I think okay. it just yeah, I, I find I have more clarity in my business decisions. Um, it's funny. I'm the person that struggles to order off a menu. Like I can't decide between oh, the parmigiana yes. and the lasagna. Yes. But you know, ask me something about you know it could be the most critical decision in business, and I will have Bang. a black or white opinion on it. And I wonder it is a if hard it's decision between a parma and a it, lasagna. I mean, you've you feel me, two. right? It's a very, it's yeah. a very difficult decision. Um, first of all, problems, but um, yeah, I find that not not being as okay. emotionally attached Good. has it's just it's just changed my perception and my way Let, of thinking. Let's talk growth. Mm. Uh, you've already. I want, I want to find out what's been the biggest win you've had. Now, mm. I would probably argue that getting the Woolworths account prior <laughs> to having any product, uh, yeah. or actually having product floating yeah. on a container yeah, somewhere, somewhere there, on a ship, you've got a buyer. Yeah. That's a big win. Yeah. Another big win that kind of really created momentum for you, and is, and, and it doesn't have to be like mm. massive, but it could just be someone said something, mm. or you made a decision, and it was whatever. But is there anything that comes to mind? Oh, yeah, you know. Years ago, uh, about probably about 11 years ago now, we sponsored uh, Melbourne Fashion Week. I can't recall exactly which iteration or who the sponsor was, but it was the Fashion Week in Melbourne. And we sponsored a couple of designers who actually designed a pattern for a moxie tin that we had produced in a very limited quantity and we gave those out for free to all the VIPs in the room. And that designer actually had clothes printed with that same print and put that down the runway. Oh, wow. And we made it into Vogue, which Hello. I never... And apparently it was the first time that Vogue had ever featured a tampon brand. And, you know, I think for us to have made it into such a, you know, prominent fashion publication mm-hmm. as a fashion must-have was... It was pretty amazing. Did you see any any results from that in terms of increased brand awareness? Sales? Definitely, yeah, we definitely People got about it. absolutely definitely got more brand awareness from it. Um, sales sales, I'm not so sure. I think 
hard to I track. Really, it is hard to track and I really do believe in the whole touch point theory and that it takes multiple touch points to make a sale um, and it's it's absolutely Interesting you say that. the case just, in this category. Just before yeah. you came in, I responded to an email yeah. from a potential sponsor who said, I would like to sponsor your show. I said, great, mm. here's my sponsorship proposal. They've come back and they've said, uh, can we just do, because I sell it in packs of, of 12 episodes because, you know, you've got to build up some frequency, sure. right? And they can we just do one? And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, because I'm happy to take you. Well, I'm not happy to take your money. I could take your money. Mm. I can tell you right now, one ad in this show ain't going to work. One ad on any show yeah. ain't going to work. So you've kind of got yeah. to, you got to, you got to commit. Definitely. Right? So it's about repetition. Now, Mia, right. their wins. Um, I think you would be a woman who has had a few failures and, and probably is quite proud of How them. How much time have you got, Tim, honestly? <laughs> well, this is where it gets interesting. What's the How worst thing got? that's happened oh, on your moxie the journey? The worst. It's funny because I think every time something bad happens, I'm like, this is the worst thing that's happened. Catastrophizing much. Um, <laughs> yeah. Welcome oh, to that club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, look, I, I'm a big believer in failure. I think if you don't fail and fail often, I just think fail fast. Fail fast and recover quickly if you can. Failure is really important. I think it's what's helped us grow and it's what, what's helped us learn quickly. I'd say one of the things that, again, I'm, I don't know I don't know if I'd call it a fail because Let I think me. we t- would have done it anyway. You know, we, I'm, I'm not a what-if person. I'm the person that would jump off the bridge just to see what's underneath it. You know, I'd, I'd, I always hate, I'd hate to wonder what if. Yeah. So we um, had an opportunity to export Moxie in 2009 to the UK. Mm-hmm. So we got interest from a very, very big retailer over there and um, – they wanted to range us, again, in quite a significant number of stores and we thought, oh, this is fabulous, but perhaps a little too premature. We actually didn't even have a full suite of products. So we only had tampons in our range. We hadn't yet extended into pads or liners or anything else. Just on that, it would be worth noting for the listeners, um, you have extended. You've got, as you say, yeah. uh, pads, you've got hot water bottles, you've yeah. got chocolate, you even sell Nutella we do. on your website, which I think is a yeah. fantastic idea. Anything that a girl needs for that time of the month, time sometimes of the month. it's just a little jar of Nutella to take the edge yes. off. So. Great. All <laughs> part of the brand, work. all that little cheekiness of the brand exactly. showing itself. Okay, exactly. back to yeah. this UK retailer. Yeah, so as I said, we were, you know, I don't think we were really prepared and um, we kind of got a few threats. They sort of said to us, well, look, if you guys don't do it, if you, if you don't deliver this product we're going to rip it off and we'll do it ourselves. Wow. And we thought, oh, no, we can't let that happen. And so off we went. So we actually then developed a full suite of products. We developed pads and liners, enormous investment, um, you know, found a warehouse in the UK, fell into a quite a bad deal. We just Sounds like you panicked. Um, no? Or not sure that we... we needed to do at some point anyway? It was going to happen either way. That's what I mean. I think it... oh, Look, I think it was bound to happen. We certainly le- learnt a lot from it. We... Um... We, yeah, it was a bad deal. It was really onerous and, um, yeah, in hindsight it wasn't great. It, it, it taught us a lot about export. Export's really tough. It sounds, sounds easy and it sounds really exciting mm-hmm. but I think maintaining that kind of business on that sort of scale at a distance is really, really challenging mm-hmm. and um, it's also it's even difficult to find the right agents or the right distributors. So I think finding the right partners is critical. Like if, if it is something you want to explore um, as, a, as a local brand, Finding the right team, the right people around you is really Would it be important. fair to say that at that point in time, in 2009, when you get an mm. offer from a UK retailer, that you probably hadn't even bedded down Moxie in Australia. No, that's right. Or New Zealand, you know, the yeah, local region. Yeah, absolutely. And going to the other side of the world. Yeah, absolutely. We right. it, was, it was just too premature. Okay, but it forced you to extend the product range and... Look, it did and... You're eternally grateful. It did and now, and you know... i say, it is ace. I mean, I'm looking yeah. at the box here, so to speak. Wow, <laughs> so many gags. I, I reckon I've been so good... <laughs> Hours of fun. Um, but it's beautiful. So and you've bedded it down now. Tell me, you also got involved with the wrong partner and did you lose 500 grand? Yeah, of... that was that was another UK story. Oh, so, God. yeah, it was our warehouse. Don't go to the UK. Don't go to the UK. They're all over there. Oh, gosh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what were we business. doing? What were we thinking? So, yeah, we, we found a, um, a warehouse, basically. We needed an on-site warehouse to dispatch... Um, to the retailer and we found this guy and, you know, talk the talk and went to the... We actually flew over there and went to the warehouse and spent a significant amount of time with him and everything was fantastic. Long story short, within about six months, he went into liquidation and I forget exactly what they're called, but there's a set of, of, of legal terms in the UK that 
all warehouses are, are bound by, and basically it's in their favour. Mm-hmm. Basically says if they lose your stock, you can't do anything about it's it. Your problem. Yeah, so he went into liquidation. God knows what happened to our stock, but he had about half a million dollars worth of it, oh, man. and um, off it went. When was this? Uh, yeah, two thousand and ten ish. Took us a long time to recover. Tell uh, tell me about the mindset then. You're a young mm. <laughs> in business. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. Well, you just made a wrong decision, or taken for a ride, yeah. or someone's taken advantage. Whatever. Yeah. How do you, are you strong of mind enough to go? Well, 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 it's okay. Or did you go fall into a heap? No, I think we went. It's okay. It's going to be okay. It's funny. My business More partner and I. Yeah, we always look at each other when things really go down like that. We look at each other and we say, or if we need, or if we're making a very risky decision, we often look at each other and say, right, what's the worst that can happen? And I think at that point we got to, we might lose our houses. We said, okay, but we're still around. Okay, we could we could start again, maybe. Okay, all right, cool, let's do it. You know, so really, That's yeah. So I think that was kind of the discussion, and we still have it. We still have that discussion. What is the worst that can happen? And we kind of feel like as long as we've got our, you know, health, got our health, yeah, we've got our families. Wow. You know, the rest is just bonus. The yep. rest is a bonus. If everything else in life comes off without a hitch, then fantastic. It doesn't always work that way. Mm. So we have that conversation and I think it's a good it's a good reset. And so yeah, I think with that it just it made us made us more driven. Mm-hmm. It it we learnt a lot. We certainly don't enter into export agreements lightly. We had an incredible deal from the US a few years ago. Uh, one of the major pharmacy retailers over there wanted to put us in 8,000 stores. Hello. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I was already buying <laughs> yeah. yachts in my head and, oh, I'd already spent the money. Um, thinking about, gosh, what we could do. But, um, yeah, the more we, the further we got into that deal, again, it was incredibly onerous. They mm-hmm. basically wanted pay on scan. They wanted to pay us on scan. So, yeah, that's hard. Which... Oh, it was not sustainable, no. you know. So for us to just even afford to hold that amount of stock, pay on scan, let alone pay on scan, buys a so, product and and then you get paid. Wow. Yeah. So for eight thousand stores, which is sort just of. not worth. So we actually said no. Good on you. Yeah, we takes guts to say no to big things like that. Takes guts to say no generally. Yeah, it's hard to say no, yes. but it's important. I think. Yeah, I agree. It's important. What you say no determines what you say yes to. Right, young Mia. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. As I've learned right. many a time. Uh, what about distribution? So you're in your re, you're retail, supermarkets, mm-hmm. pharmacies. You're all you're online as well. Yeah. What have you noticed about consumer buying habits over the years? Are we going online? Are we? What's happening? A lot of people are going online yes. again. I think because of the added convenience. But that said, there also is a convenience element to buying in store. If you're at the supermarket and purchasing, you're, yeah, you're purchasing your weekly. You're doing your weekly food shop. You know, feminine hygiene is something that you would just, you know, add to your basket. Mm-hmm. Um, but there certainly is quite a shift to online. Again, particularly with, you know, time poor, young professionals, young couples, young students living in very small apartments, perhaps not even shopping as much for food. Mm. Um, How do you balance that between talking to a supermarket buyer who really wants to own, wants a monopoly over the distribution of a product, mm. right, versus going, oh, yeah, you know... with People can buy it online. They don't have to come into your supermarket. How, mm. do, you, how do you manage? Is it is it an issue or is it not? An it's issue? not an issue. And look, no, it's not an issue. The market's huge. Like the market, I, I feel like the market. Of- I can't think of a lot of products in the supermarket that I can go and buy online. Well, the supermarkets have got their own online stores as well. So they kind of service that part of the market themselves. So they've kind of got their finger in that that pie also. Okay. I think it's a very different customer. So I think for us, a Moxie Box Club customer is um, – it is really a brand loyalist. It's yeah. someone that's willing to invest. It is it is a significant investment. So it's $30 a box. Mm-hmm. So you can choose to have that delivered. For how many? Uh, so you get five products. You can choose whatever products you want. The value is obviously okay, so a lot the higher. Box, which is the gift box. Yeah. You can have five products in it. You have five there, products in bucks. it. But um, as I said, you know, like some of those items alone are worth, you know, 10 or even $15. Mm-hmm. So the value is quite high and they are items you can't necessarily buy elsewhere. Um, but it is still, it still is a hurdle to purchase. So you can purchase it either monthly, bi-monthly or quarterly, which yes. effectively kind of reduces that monthly spend. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, arguably you could just go to the shops and buy a pack for five bucks mm-hmm. if you only needed the one. So I think it is a slightly different customer as well. I think we're servicing a different customer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, look, touch wood at this stage, we haven't we haven't had an issue. Again, we I don't think we've got a big enough piece of the pie <laughs> to to really, you know, 
warrant any issues yeah, okay. at this stage. Okay. It'd be a good problem to have. Well, let's talk about uh, the pie and yeah. increasing your slice of that pie, which yeah. marketing is pretty good at. Mm. Um, so what marketing is most effective for you? What, what really, for you, you know that if you do this, you're mm. going to get this? Sampling's always been really great for yeah, us. Right. Sampling's great. Getting the product in people's hands, and I look. I wonder if that would be true of other brands. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think we're fortunate that we've got this cute factor. Like our moxie yes. tins are really cute. People really want the tins, and um, you know it is kind of a desirable product, and it does lend itself to this more sort of fashion area. So we do we do a lot of sampling in you know fashion relate at fashion related events. Mm-hmm. So that that works really really well for us. I'd say that's probably one of the things that's been most effective. Mm. Um, I've had a number of a number of, I've had three different guests over the years that have actually got their product mm. into the bags at the Oscars, the oh, show wow. bags at the Oscars. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. There you go. That's yeah. your little entree into yeah. America. Brilliant. Um it must be a, a challenge selling a product that gets represented so often in euphemistic terms. So mm. we were laughing in our pre-interview the other day, like an ad for a tampon normally involves blue liquid. Mm. I'm not sure you bleed blue. Uh, you not know, last time often, I checked, we no. We often <laughs> see women in their white sporting gear. Yeah. And it's all very cliché. Yeah. Does that create, does it make it difficult to get your message across? Initially, it actually made it easier because I feel like we were the first brand that really came out and said, this is all bogus. <laughs> this is not how it happens at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This is not how things roll in the real world. Mm. Um, we came out and said our first our first tagline was, um, have a beautiful day in hell. <laughs> so we pretty much acknowledged that the experience was going to be rubbish. We pretty much came out and said... It's not going to be fun, you guys. Sorry. It's going to be crap. We can't do anything about that. We can't change that. But what we can change is, you know, is this. We can at least provide you with a product that's going to work. Put a smile on your face. It's going to make you laugh a little bit. Yep. You're going to feel well equipped and, you know, we're very real about what we can deliver. And so that allowed us to create some noise because that message was not the message that the majority of the market was was mm-hmm. telling. So, again, it was polarising. Some people went, oh, that's offensive, that's ridiculous. But we, again, we know one of our brand values is being real mm-hmm. and we stand by that. Everything we do is real. We're transparent in, our, in everything that we do and part of it is about what we can deliver. We're not going to over-promise and under-deliver. Mm-hmm. We're not about women running on the beach in white pants. Um, Ironically, great, I'm wearing a white skirt today. Are, but <laughs> uh, You've got a great video on the website too, which has a woman in white gear on a bike yeah, in the middle the of the sporting field. But she has an accident. Yeah, yeah. She has an accident and yeah. it's all very real. And, yeah, you it know, happens. We t- yeah. You talk about polarising and I love that. It's a great discussion to have because I think far too many business owners are scared to get anyone's nose out of joint. Yeah. And I just think it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, would it be fair to say that you you're pol- you do actually polarise a fair chunk of the market? I mean, I look mm. at Moxie and I go, I, I don't know, it's probably for the 50 to 30-year-old woman. And after that, you know, they're going to go, oh, that's not for me. That's a young person's product. Yeah. I'll have to stay free, thank you. It's interesting. <laughs> it's so interesting you say that because... Yeah. I'm, Am I wrong? Well, say it. Well, I'm. Know. I'm gonna. Well, I'm. 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 I'm gonna pose a different view. Go. Put it that way. Um, so I would say that I think where we sit is or where we where we like to think we sit is quite an aspirational audience. Yes. So we are slightly older. When I say slightly older, I mean eighteen plus. So a lot of brands in this space will target first time users, which makes sense because if you get them when they're young and they stick to your product, then they use it you know, indefinitely. Um, but again, we knew we couldn't compete head on. So we chose a slightly older audience. And as I said, Moxie is the brand that you buy because you like it. It's your own choice. So it's not the brand mum buys. It's the brand that you buy because you like it. So we went 18, sort of 18 to 24-ish as our kind of as our core. And we found that the young girls, so the, the 15-year-olds, want what the 18, 24-year-olds have got. Yes. And the 30-plus women, which want, I'm now in the, that bucket, yeah, you know, I was, younger. yeah, they want to be younger. So it's a really, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting place to be. And that said, I've got, you know, wonderful 50-plus-year-old women Bless that are, yeah, that are, that you know, email me and say, I don't necessarily need to use these products for their core use anymore, but I'm using them for some other things or for just for freshness or whatever. And you know, thanks for hmm. providing something so thoughtful that still resonates with me. So it's it's really interesting that it actually does appeal to a much broader segment. We do kind of target quite specifically, which we have to to make our marketing effective. Mm. But it it does certainly go above and below 
How do you keep Those, your um, finger on points. the pulse of what your tribe is thinking and talking about? Do you actively ring customers? Do you mm. stand? I have. A, I had a fellow who I worked with in advertising many years ago, who um, looked after a lot of FMCG products. Mm. And what he would do is he would get the marketing director of a big FMCG brand to go with him to the supermarket yeah. to stand in the aisle oh, and watch wow. people uh, buy a product from that category. Yeah. And then they just watch, and then sometimes they go up afterwards and say, "Why'd you choose the yeah. cornflakes over the Vitabrits?" Or, which I think is brilliant. How, how do you stay in contact? That's really difficult in this category. Like it's, it's as I said, it's, it's, it is a grudge purchase, and it's quite an embarrassing purchase, unfortunately. But there is still a stigma attached to purchasing feminine hygiene products. Really? Yeah, there is. Again, not everybody. From where? And I find it's kind of the the older women that are still a little bit embarrassed about buying it. Right. Again, not everybody, okay. but there there still is a bit of a stigma attached to it, which you know we're trying very very hard to change. Cause... A bit like buying condoms, really. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I, I do. Just I put it in that camp. <laughs> yeah, I put it in that camp. Yeah. Um, and so. Yeah, we, we try not to sort of shadow women at the point of purchase because, yeah, be a bit it's, weird. It, it's, it's a bit strange. Well, maybe. I mean, it'd be <laughs> it's a, weird a bloke did it. I, I don't think if you went up to a woman in the aisle of a supermarket who's just put some tampons mm. in a trolley and you said, hey, listen, I'm Mir, I own Moxie. That would be weird. <laughs> I think it would be. I think it would be incredibly valuable. I'm going to try that and report, report back. back. Thank you. Thank you. What about social media? Yeah, social media is great. So I actually, I'm really heavily involved in all the customer service stuff that we do. So I touch all of it. So all the customer inquiries come directly to me. Wow. And I even monitor I monitor all of our social media pages as well, which is, <laughs> yeah, I think I've bitten off quite a chunk. But, A, I love that it. sounds like I a love con- it. control freak. In no, I think it's, it's, I think it's just... It's been really wonderful and I think on both on both sides. I think it's great for me to really understand my customers and to know to know what they're saying. And I'm not, you know, I don't get offended if someone has a suggestion or a complaint or whatever it may be. I'm all ears. Mm-hmm. I'm I, I really embrace it and I think that's really important to do as a brand owner. And I think on the flip side of that, I think customers are really appreciative that someone has taken the time no to doubt. actually get back to them. And the owner. Yeah. It's and I ice. think it's yeah, it's not it's sometimes it's not easy, but I think it's really important and it really allows us to stay in touch. So I really kind of understand where they're at at all times and what they're saying. Yes. And they know that they've got this direct link to the brand as well. And I feel like in a way it kind of makes them feel a little bit more like they're part of something, which they are. You've got 54,000 followers on Facebook. You have yeah. got five on Insta. Um, I, I was surprised to see that. I would have mm. thought Insta is your bread and butter. No, Insta's uh, hard. It's just really hard. Yeah, it's that it's 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 really baffled us too, to be right. honest. Facebook is amazing for In us. Way. I've, I wonder if it's because it allows us to have more of a discussion. Yes. So again, Moxie is kind of the brand that is, you know, it is it is quite vocal as a brand. We like to we like to open up cans of worms, so to yes. speak. We have an opinion on things. We're not scared to voice it, and we encourage our we, mock sets. So our customers are called mock sets, which they, <laughs> they've called themselves mock sets, which I absolutely love. So we encourage our mock sets to have an open dialogue with us and Facebook really allows for that. Instagram, not so much. I feel like Instagram's a bit more of a visual diary. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I just, I kind of appreciate that perhaps women don't necessarily want to see images of their tampons no. every day in their <laughs> no, Instagram no. feed. So I think they do different all things. Or their Facebook feed. All their, yeah, all their, their Facebook feed. feed. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, so, so it's it's just about, it's about the conversation that we have. And I think we, perhaps we're just doing a better job of it on Facebook than so we are on Instagram. So worms is a strategy that works for you, being opinionated um, on Facebook. Yeah. Give us an example of a post that's really worked its pants off for you. Um... Oh my goodness! I'm trying um, to think of on the, the spot. Yeah, or maybe just a, there are a, a certainly kind there, of post. there. Yeah, um, I can't think of one exactly. Okay. Off my, I wish. Oh god, yeah, I wish I knew. Yeah. I would have. Come, yeah, I would have come yeah, yeah. up with one because we, we've had quite a few, to be honest, and they get like tens of, of thousands of hits. Like right. it just floors me every time. But it might be something to do with um, there may be a women's rights issue happening somewhere in the world, and or it might be a legal case, or there's there's something going on, yep. and we will post about it, but we will also have an opinion on it. Mm-hmm. So rather than just throwing it out there and saying, hey, what do you think? We say, this is what we think. Because we do have a firm stance. We are very, again, we're very real. We're very... Um, have you grabbed hold of the Me Too thing, the hashtag Me Too, and kind of run with that? Um, we haven't as much. Mm-hmm. Not not specifically, but certainly iterations of it. Mm-hmm. Again, I think for us it's about relevance um, and just, you know, really picking up on the things that that, you know 
that are relevant, which, of course, that is relevant as women. You but um, social influencer you know, marketing, could you? Because sending it out to social influencers or celebrities and them having them say, hey, I use Moxie is kind of not yeah, going to cut it. Yeah, we have hey, done a bit of that. There you go. Yeah, we have done a bit of that. But, again, it's you know it's all about really authentic relationships. Yes. So we ensure that everything that we do is is authentic and it's, you know, it's a genuine it's a genuine collaboration. It's mm-hmm. genuinely because that person really likes the brand or uses the brand, not just because we paid them to. Mm-hmm. So, um, Mira, I love what you've done. I think Moxie, uh, for anyone who is interested in brand, and I mean brand visually, I mean brand from a copy point of view because some of the cheeky lines, I mean, just <laughs> there's go a to lot the Moxie. Of che- yeah, they're, we- they're hidden through it. So I actually wrote all the copy on our website. I love it. And there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of um, Double entendres and a bit of cheekiness in well, there. Well, there are, <laughs> and I think anyone who who wants to understand that side of their marketing better, then go and have a look at the Moxie website and see how you've done that. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful box. I imagine the whole customer experience of buying online is fantastic. I think it's very exciting. If someone is listening and wants to make an offer to buy Moxie, then uh, please contact <laughs> me uh, directly. All offers accepted. All offers accepted. Or considered, considered, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Accepted. not accepted. Exactly right. Uh, the, it's a big yacht that you want on those Greek <laughs> islands. And there's a lot of women that we need to help in other countries too. Yes, so exactly. um yeah. Okay, and Moxie, M O X I dot com M O X I E. I E I should say. Correct. Dot yeah. com. Dot A U. Dot A U is yeah. where to go and get your supply. Mia, thank you for taking us behind the scenes of a wonderful brand. Thank you. Thanks so much. Well, there you go, team. Moxie's Mia Klitsis. What a brilliant story of highs and lows. Coming up, thanks to American Express, I share my top three attention grabbers from that chat with Mia. Plus, we are going to hear from, and I will reward two listeners who are having great success with their marketing, thanks to this show. My top three attention grabbers, thanks to American Express, uh, following my chat with Mia. Attention grabber number one, I love how Mia said she's a big fan of failure. I love that. As she said, when confronted with failure, you should ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? And often in doing that little exercise, you'll find the worst thing ain't that bad. Attention grabber number two. I couldn't agree more with her view that we should all work harder at injecting massive amounts of personality into your marketing messages. I've said this, I reckon, many, many times before, but, you know, I can't reinforce this one enough. If you want to see how this is done, then check out the video at the bottom of moxie.com.au. It's absolutely hilarious. And another past guest who did, does this really, really well is Andre Eichmeyer and his team from Vino Mofo, the online wine store. Very impressive. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Attention grabber number three. I'm impressed, so impressed that Mira is so active responding to her tribe on social media. I think the big lesson here is that business owners should get more involved at the coalface with their customers. You know, as, as a customer myself, I love hearing from the boss, you know, as opposed to a call centre or customer service rep. I know sometimes that's what we've got to do, but uh, if you're the boss, the founder of your business, go on, reach out to a few clients every now and then, personally face-to-face, over the phone, however you choose to do it. That's what grabbed my attention. You can find the Facebook Live video of that interview, uh, plus links to all the resources mentioned over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 413. Come on down. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Oh, yes, indeedly, doodly, it is that time of the episode. I think I might go as far as saying one of my favourite segments for two reasons. We get to hear what's working from other listeners, other small business owners, and I get to give away some prizes that have been donated by past guests, very generously donated, some great prizes to be won. To enter, this is all you've got to do. You've got to email me, tim at timreed.com.au, and that's R-E-I-D. Tell me one idea you've implement, implemented from listening to this show what impact it had on your business, and if I read it out on air, bang, you receive a prize or two. 
And how's this? You go into the draw to win a hot lap in a Porsche with past guest and race car legend, racing car driver legend, Steve Richards. And that's valued at two and a half grand. Uh, that'll go to the le- uh, the letter of the year later this year. Pretty simple to enter. Okay, let's find out who today's winners are. And the first one is Sam Hemphill from Meum, M-E-E-U-M dot com. He says, hi, Tim. Hey, Sam. We've started publishing our testimonials to our site as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Genius. Now, he's put a link to some of these testimonials. I'll check them out. Here's the thing. Before I tell you just how successful and effective this little marketing play is, these aren't video testimonials. They're not audio testimonials. They're just text-only testimonials. So nothing fancy but great testimonials nonetheless. Back to Sam. He says, it's made a big difference and our ticket sales have definitely gone up since implementing this. We train small business owners, school teachers and others how to build websites using HTML and CSS. Oh, geek alert. Didn't see that coming. (laughs) But HTML and CSS, what's going on there? Um, Back to Sam. The testimonials have also decreased the number of phone and email inquiries we get, even though our sales are up, as I'm sure future students have greater confidence from reading them. So that's a great lesson. You know, you're reducing the need for customer service for more inquiry. You're building trust for the from these testimonials. And as a result, people are pre-sold before they call Sam. Sam says, thanks. Uh, P.S. It's one of our business goals to be invent- in- invented, interviewed on Small Business Big Marketing Show within 12 months because we're going to be that successful. Well, Sam, mate, I... I just hope you are that successful. And absolutely, I would love to have you on if that's the case. Thanks, buddy, for the letter. Uh, You have won a limited edition black leather orbit key valued at $99 and two Amex lounge passes that get you into the Amex lounge at Sydney or Melbourne International Airports valued at $66 thanks to American Express. It's pretty easy, this monster prize draw stuff, isn't it? Who is our next motivated listener and winner? Oh, it is Lena Van Ray of bikeandblend.com.au. Now, Lena is a past guest of this show, as was Ben Newsom last week's winner, uh, also a past guest of the show. See, I don't discriminate. You can be a past guest and a winner on the show. I love it. Lena says, hey, Timbo, congrats on your awesome podcast. Thanks, Lena. I have been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show for over six years now and still love it. Wow. you got to get out more. <laughs> I make notes on my phone sometimes, so I remember to action the learnings. So far, I have implemented from the Jayco interview. That's uh, Jerry Ryan from Jayco Caravans. Business isn't complicated. It's the people in it that are... Get the right people. That was a great learning from Jerry, and I'm glad you have implemented that, Lena. And she also says, take care of your customers, employees, and culture, and the rest will follow. I have focused on this over the last two years, and it's really paying off now. My business has grown 50% recently. Also, partnerships are key. Love your work, Timbo. Well, Len, they, they are really great learnings that you've taken from the show, and I'm honoured to be the conduit for you getting those learnings. Lena says, so many more to implement. Marketing is endless, fu- endless fun. Hashtag test and measure. Yes, absolutely. Test something, measure it. If it didn't work, doesn't mean you've got to get rid of it. Make a slight tweak, try it again. Hope all is well. Lena Van Ray, Bike and Blend. Lena, love your work. You have won a Hunting for George voucher valued at 100 bucks. Well, it is. It's a $100 voucher to go and spend at that wonderful online uh, interior design store, Hunting for George. Thank you, girls, for donating that. And to Amex Lounge Passes, valued at $66, thanks to American Express. That's the monster prize draw for another week. Hit me up with what you've learnt on this show. If I read it out, you win. Email me, tim at timreid.com.au. Righto, that almost, almost brings us to the end of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, episode 413. 
just for another week. Hey, we've previously caught up with some amazing guests. Celebrity personal trainer, Michelle Bridges was one of them. She took us behind the scenes of her hugely successful 12-week body challenge. And do you remember that chat we had with TEDx Melbourne founder, John Yeo? I tell you what, if you think you've got a TED talk in you, then take a listen to that interview with John as he reveals exactly what it takes to be a TED talk. TED talker? Is that the word? TED speaker? You know what I mean. You'll find both those episodes plus hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, a website that I'm in the process of uh, up, upgrading, updating, making look swish and new. Uh, or you can subscribe free on your favourite podcast app, which means that you'll never, ever miss another episode. I'd love to hear from you. Go to the contact button over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. You can email me. You can connect with me on social media. Even buy a copy of my book, The Boomerang Effect. And a very, very big thank you to American Express for exclusively sponsoring this episode and uh, the next couple of weeks' episodes as well, uh, which means less ads for you, which I know you're loving. And if you love the American Express Business Explorer credit card, then so you should because it can uh, help you get a few points to go on holiday, which is kind of a good thing. Check it out. Amex Business is what you need to Google. Speaking of love, if you love the small business big marketing show, then let another business owner know about it. Just grab their phone, open up the podcast app, search for small business big marketing, hit subscribe and tell them to just choose an episode and listen to it. There's over 400, so, you know, something for everyone. Everyone's a winner. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Always have been, always will be. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. 